In Jesus' name, all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Do you know who this guy is? Huh? He's a, oh, he's kind of famous, yeah? Uh, what is he famous for? Money. Money, right? And uh, he, I, I heard that he is uh, uh, at least number two uh, richest man in America. Is it true? And yet, his uh, biographer said this. Uh, he once confessed to his biographer, saying that one thing that I am very scared of, I am afraid to die. You see, he subscribed his father's ethics in his business, but he didn't subscribe his uh, parents' religion. Even when he was young, he was too logical, too mathematical to jump in, make a leap of faith. And he rather trust the numbers, logics, mathematical equations rather than unseen, untouchable divinity. So, even though he is very successful, even though he has lots of money, you, we think someone has lots of money, they will be very happy. Of course, maybe he, he has lots of money, so he's afraid to die, right? What he's going to do with all his uh, fame and fortune. And and it is not only Warren Buffett. He's honest about his fear of death. But a lot of people... I've seen a lot of people, I got to do all this. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people on deathbed, they were afraid of dying, even some Christians. Death has its own sting, and death is a mystery. And some people are afraid. And it's not coincidence that we are going to talk about resurrection this morning. We uh, had just had what the Tracy Weingarner's uh, funeral, uh, the memorial service. We pondered upon death and life, life and death and resurrection. And then when we don't do our church-wide Bible study, guess what we do? We study according to the lectionary calendar that which all UCC churches who use this lectionary calendar will talk about this subject. So I don't think it's ironical. I don't think it's a coincidence. I believe our God wants us to have strong grip on our theology, strong grip on the eternal life and resurrection. And everybody fears unknown. Everybody has a doubt of an unknown situation. Everybody is going through. And one of your family members, the loved ones, dies. Then we have our faith. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection. Whoever believes in me will not die. Even though they die, they shall live because I live. And those who believe in me will not die. Even we trust that. We know that. And a couple, few times, that going through fear, going through our minds. 
And today's passage is about the resurrection. You are thinking, well, this is, is not Easter Sunday. How come we are talking about resurrection? I mean, actually, every Sunday we are celebrating resurrection of our Lord Jesus, right? We come to worship him because we celebrate the resurrection every Sunday. The Sabbath is a Saturday, right? All Christians celebrate, keep as a Sabbath on the Sunday because it is a resurrection day, the Lord's day, amen? So we are going to talk about resurrection because some Sadducees in the Bible, today's reading, how many of you know who is a, which was a Sadducees? Why they are Sadducees called? Hmm? They, they are religious uh, Jewish group, right? They believe in only five books of Bible, which is Genesis, Exodus, and Leviticus, and uh, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, right? That's all, the, the law of Moses. And then the, there is the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And Sadducees do not believe in the resurrection. That's why they are sad, you see. <laughs> because they think life here on earth is done there, and uh, the, they think uh, the, the grave is a destiny. And when you die, that's it. No more, no nothing. Huh? No more hope. And so, that is uh, so sad if uh, you keep all the laws of Moses and you die and that's it. Why should you, right? If there is no life after grave, we should be married. If we should uh, live according to whatever pleases us, right? So, and they asked question to Jesus. They said, okay. According to the law of Moses, we're supposed to marry the, uh, our brother's wife when my, our brother dies. So there is a woman who's been married to brothers, seven brothers. So whose wife will she be upon the resurrection? So if you believe in the resurrection, that's a kind of good question. You wonder, but these guys don't believe in the resurrection and ask the question. And that's why we know they try to trip Jesus and make a fun of him or make a case for him, right? And it's like, uh, the, the, let's try readers. Do, do you say readers? Yeah. Uh, no. Why does uh, chickens cross the highway? To get this, I'll say, oh, he knows. <laughs> Which month has 28 days? Hmm? November. February. December. December. 12 months of the year. All has 28 days. See? Trick you. Which, which has uh, lots of pukas still holds water? <laughs> He's good. He's good. Spongy, right? But uh, Jesus didn't answer. I mean, when Jesus answered to uh, Sadducees, it, he took the uh, teaching moments here because he could have said, condemn them or don't try to test me or anything, but he took this moment, a teaching moment, and teaching them and us that we've got to live life with uh, through a resurrection eyes. And uh, when we look at our life, live our life with the resurrection eyes, we will fulfill the purpose of our lives and we will have a, a successful life, or we will fulfill our lives. And that's why Jesus says, look and live life through resurrection eyes. In his answers, we can find how we can do that. In his answers, 
that I've come up with the two C's that we can live life when we look at uh, through resurrection eyes, the eyes of a resurrection perspective of a heavenly world. Amen? So let's look at two C's this morning. And open, so I cannot grab my Bible because this uh, the microphone is keep on falling down, so I got to hold it. So you've got to have your Bible on your hand and then read it to me and all that. Now, uh, above verse 35, and uh, Jesus answered their question, whose wife will she be? And Jesus said something like, there won't be any marriage, anybody be given marriage. Why is that? In heaven, there won't be any marriage. You see, marriage is what? When we are on earth, when we make a covenant relationship with one another, it's a, we say what? Till death do us apart, right? So when the death comes, when we are risen from the dead, there is no covenant relationship need to be done, physical, earthly covenant relationship be done. Because we have what? Our covenant relationship with our almighty God. And we become brides of Jesus Christ. And we are not going to be in marriage. You know, our kids are very smart, right? They once asked uh, uh, Michelle, what my grandfather who died uh, before he was born and how old is he going to be when he dies and uh, risen from the dead? That's a good question, isn't it? How old uh, will you be when you are risen from the dead? And uh, what do you think? That's a good question if you believe in the resurrection, right? The question is, whichever age you want to be, it will be done. If you want to uh, be risen as a, a spring chicken, you can be. You want to uh, be risen as a seasoned senior citizen, that will be done. Because in heaven, God's will will be done, and you will be aligned with God's will. So everything you wish for, you want to for, or you want it, it will be done. Amen? Does it make sense? And then, and also, that we noticed that when Jesus was risen from uh, the dead, he what, was unrecognized by at glance, right? So it tells us that upon resurrection, we are going to be what, transformed somehow. But you still have your identity. You still have your identity because uh, later on, people recognize Jesus as Jesus, right? So, and then uh, verse 36, they no longer die, so therefore we don't need a marriage in heaven, right? They no longer die. They live forever like what? Angels. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like angels, so that's because you are, it says, children of God. And then you are children of God means you are children of what? Resurrection. That's your identity. That's your identity. You are children of a resurrection who lives forever like an angel, like angels. Can you imagine? So, should you worry about uh, you gain weight? Should you worry about you gain some wrinkles? Should you worry about anything in life? Suffering, pain, and heartaches? Because this life is so short, and we're going to live a long, long eternity. All our perishable body will be what? 
gone. Our soul is going to meet our Lord Jesus. So, in other words, Jesus is saying to uh, Sadducees that, that you've got to focus living, set your mind things above, things are more important. And because Sadducees, they live according to the, the law of Moses, Thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that, thou shalt not do this. Thou... That's no use for anything if you're going to hit the grave and that is it. That's what Jesus is telling them and us and those who believe in Jesus Christ. They are the sons and daughters of God. They are the sons and daughters of resurrection. So when there is a story about a lady who was going through um, Alzheimer's disease, and then Philip Yancey's uh, wife was volunteering at, at a nursing home where that the lady, Betsy, uh, who was uh, going through Alzheimer's disease. And one day, the volunteer, the uh, Philip Yancey's uh, wife asked uh, Betsy to read the hymn, The All Rugged Cross. And she was uh, reading on a far away, there's an All Rugged Cross stands. And then she was uh, reading, the, it's an emblem of uh, suffering and shame. And she stopped and crying. And then, and then read it again. And she again stopped and crying. And said, it's uh, too sad. And I'm so thankful that my Lord came and died on a cross. And I will cling to the all rugged cross and exchange it for someday for a crown. And this was first time in uh, many years she ever made intelligent conversation. That is her faith. And she was clinging to her identity in spite of everything is going on in her life. I mean, she lost all the memory. She doesn't recognize anybody, but she still recognizes the all rugged cross. That is, that is how we should live when we live life through the eyes of a resurrection, when we set our minds on the things above, that's how we can live life in its fullness. That's how we no longer have to be slaves to fear because I am a child of the Most High God. Amen? That's what our Lord Jesus wants us to really, really get strong grip on that theology that what Jesus has done is for you and you shall cling to it, cling to your identity. Amen? Amen. So last, the first uh, uh, C will be cling what? Cling to the old rugged cross or cling to my identity. So please say to your neighbors and look at each other and say, I am a child of God. God. Of God. You got to be very convincing though. And then when I die, I will rise from the dead. When I die, I will rise from the dead. And I become like an angel. 
That's why we all say, you know, when you do such good ministries and helping and loving one another, we call you, what? Angels of God, right? And you are going to become angels when upon your resurrection because you are a child of Most High God. Amen? Shout, let's shout it. I am. I am. A child of God. Amen? So you shouldn't be no longer slaves to fear of uh, heartaches and headaches or sufferings, finances, and broken relationships. No longer you should suffer from fear because you are child of Most High God. And when you focus on that, God will deliver you. All things going to work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Amen? Amen. And then second um, C is this. And uh, the verse is uh, 38. Um, is it 38? Uh, the, uh, Jesus says what? God is not the God of death but God of living and all who are alive, all who are alive in Christ, dead or live, we are alive in Christ. That is what God is for. And God is for the living, not God is for, God is not for the grave. God is not for the death. Or when we die, we are living, right? So God is for living eternal life or earthly life. God is for. You know, there is a story about a um, Chinese uh, um, peasant girls, um, the country girls, um, who was so despaired by their situation. And uh, 51 girls dressed up, their best dress and makeup, and their best look, and committed suicide, jumped into the river uh, in China, thinking and hoping that they could be reincarnated to a city woman, um, rich family. That is a pagan religion somehow they bought into that they are going to be reincarnated. And this, we can kind of brush it off, all oh, poor uh, pagan religion, poor girls. But some reason, some Christians, they bought into this. Death will lead them to eternal life, so when life gets hard, harder, and they choose to commit suicide. See, living with a purpose, living the life God has given to us is more serious business than dying. Dying is easier than try to mold ourselves to be trained and disciplined, become more like Jesus. That's all we're going to take to heaven, right? The, our character. We sometimes misunderstand that our Lord Jesus came not only to give us eternal life, life everlasting, life as a, living as angels in heaven, but also to give us what? Abundant life. Abundant life here on earth. Abundant life here on earth. And when we live according to the purpose of our life and when we are led by the uh, direction of the Holy Spirit, when we discipline ourselves, that's when we are going to have abundant life. Abundant life doesn't mean rich like uh, Warren Buffett. 
Abundant life comes when we seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Then everything will be added onto you. And, and a lot of Christians are very rich. But they didn't become rich because they chased after the fame and fortune. They chased after what? God, Almighty God. He has good answers. Almighty God. And they crave to uh, live for God as they are on this earth. And Apostle Paul says, uh, uh, when he was in uh, jail, he says what? He was expecting execution. He's uh, waiting for his death sentence. And he says, Philippians 1.21, he says what? For to me is what? Live, to live is for Christ. And to die is gain. You gain better home, better house, better body, better everything. So that's a done deal. I can relax. I don't have to worry about it. That's a done deal. So therefore, when I live, I will live for Jesus. He's saying, I have a strong craving to live for Jesus. My life, my all whole being. You know, we often try to carry out our mission, carry out, uh, live out our purpose, and we try to evangelize people. We try to get the people into heaven, right? Lead them to get into heaven. When our children, everybody we know, we try to get them to Jesus so that they can get in the heaven, right? We forget. We forget that that is what the we forget that we forgot to teach them to obey what Christ commanded us. We forget that Jesus been talking about kingdom of heaven here on earth. Jesus tried to get the heaven into us, into everybody we've connected. Not only say them ABC and baptize them so that, that they can have a guaranteed life, salvation, justification, but also we have to lead them for sanctification. And if we don't leave a sanctification, we cannot lead anybody to sanctification. We cannot work together. And when we do sanctification, in the work of sanctification, then we will have heaven in our hearts. When we have a heaven in our hearts, what each one of us have a heaven in our hearts, then this ohana will be what? Kingdom of heaven on earth. That's what Jesus wants us. Did you, did you know that? Amen. Kingdom of God. Who rules in the kingdom of God? Jesus. God rules. Right? When God rules me and God rules all my life, everything I do, this will be what? Kingdom of God. Do you get it? When Christ rules everything I do, everything I do, then it is kingdom of God. Now, how do we do that? How do we do that? We've got to crave to live for Jesus as apostle Paul says. Let Christ rule. The peace of Christ rule our lives. And it doesn't just come. We've got to work at it. The salvation, first part is free. And second part, sanctification is not free. We've got to work for it, right? We've got to work for Jesus in order to have a heaven 
in our lives. We've got to crave to live for Jesus. That's when we are going to have a peace of Jesus Christ rule our hearts. And no matter what's happening around us, we will not fear. We will not rattle. We will not destroy. We will not dismayed. We will not walk away from our faith. We will cling to our identity. You see, it who are together. Amen? So what will be the second C our Lord Jesus wants to teach us? God is for, not for the living, uh, not for the dead, but for the living. All who are alive. So therefore, we've got to live for God and we've got to crave to serve Him. We've got to crave to please Him. Th that's why you are here today. Th this morning is Aren't you? We've got to. So what would be second? Um, crave. Mm -hmm. crave to live for Jesus Christ. Crave to live for our God. Amen? So let's say to our neighbors, for to me, to live is for Christ. Huh? The, the, so, cr you know, I was going to say, crave for cream. So memorize that, crave for cream. Cream. And uh, when we look at uh, uh, life, live life through the resurrection eyes, then we crave for cream. Cream stands for what? Christ rules everything around me. Okay? Crave for cream. Christ rules everything around me. So for to me, say to your neighbor, for to me, to live is for Christ, to die is a gain. Amen? That's your confession. Our God wants us to remember what he has done, what our Lord Jesus has done. When we believe in him and he shed his blood to save us, to give us eternal life and to give us abundant life here on earth. And that's what our God Jesus wants us to look at and live life through the resurrection eyes, through the lens of God's perspective. That's when we can have a, a full life. We can live a successful life according to the purpose of our lives. Amen? So how do we do that? First, we have to cling to the all rugged cross, my identity, and crave for cream. Crave to live for Christ. Amen? That's when our God is going to bless our socks off. Amen? Okay, let us pray. Oh Lord God, we thank you for your love and grace poured out. And this table just reminds us your sacrifice. Help us to live life worthy of your sacrifice. Oh God, pour out your anointing and lead us to live life as an ambassador.